Slavoj Zizek, my man, uh, one of my favorites. Um, I was really obsessed <laughs> with him. I don't know if anybody remembers that, but like six months ago or so, I was like really obsessed with Zizek. Uh, but you know, getting more into Deleuze and Guattari, I've kind of changed gears. Um, Zizek is obviously more Lacan and Hegel, which obviously Deleuze and Guattari have their uh, <laughs> bones to pick with Lacan and Hegel <laughs> in particular. But um, he went on the what is what is left of the Low Society podcast uh, after Peter and uh, Ashley Coffin yeeted themselves off. Apparently, it's just Angie Angie Speaks and her boyfriend now who do this. Um, and I really don't like her. I just really don't. I just all of the takes that I've seen her posting on Twitter are cringe. So it's just kind of like. Yeah, uh, but Zizek went on here and he said some comments that I find just absolutely like, how could you say this, dude? Like, it's I it, it almost feels like a betrayal. It's so cringe. But um, let's get into it. Let's get into it. What you pointed out... <coughs> It's very important. You know what would be my answer to it? Not to you, but to all this debt. That's why when, for example, in feminist struggles, you have inner conflicts, we should be very attentive to these conflicts. For example, did you follow, I did follow it a little bit, this conflict between how they have got uh, 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 the, the trans women and the women who insist on their yeah. 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 And I think both sides has a point. Of he said this. He said this in an interview uh <laughs> in like December, I believe. But he didn't say he basically said like both sides have a point. Turfs. He literally mentioned trans exclusionary rap. He said that they have a point, which isn't but that I think in that interview he said he ultimately sides with transgenderism so uh base Zizek but here here my alarm bells are going off because he he doubles down on his defense of turfs and I don't I don't see why he would do this it doesn't make sense it doesn't make sense with the rest of his like I'm gonna play a clip after this where it just completely conflicts like it it doesn't make sense with the rest of his philosophy but. Of course, in principle, one can agree with trans women. This is not a natural thing to be a woman. is a social construct, blah, blah. But on the other hand, I tend to agree with the other side who often say, listen, there is a guy here. He didn't have the courage to operate himself to cut off the penis. <laughs> See, like that is just a bigoted statement. Like, there's not really anything funny about that. I don't understand why Angie Speaks is laughing so hard at this. Um, you don't, you don't, like, here's the thing. They literally, he's against essentialist logic on race, <coughs> like, on racial issues to a T. But then he deploys it on gender as if having a penis makes one a man. You see what I'm saying? And this is, I think, it might have something to do this might be a really stupid thing to say, but it might have something to do with the notion of the phallus in Lacan. It might, like, it might. But, <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's just, it just doesn't make sense why he would deploy this point. Because obviously, trans women are still women if they, no matter if they are, like, no matter what their genitalia is. Genitalia doesn't equal gender, Slavoj. I don't understand why you would even entertain this notion. I think it's beneath you. Uh, and that's just not funny. Like, it's just, it's just, there's just nothing funny about that statement. Like, it's just, it's just a hurtful thing to say at the end of the day. And it's, and it's just inaccurate, like. As a woman, and now he wants to, to be one of us. There is something fake in it, you know? A woman no there isn't there really isn't like and that 
that's the thing that turfs kind of don't understand is that nobody is saying like nobody is saying i am literally a cis woman if they're a trans woman nobody is nobody is saying that that's not what we're saying is basically the definition of woman is expanded beyond just people who have the biological sexual categorization of female. You see what I'm saying? I'm sure you people know what I'm saying uh, if you're on this channel, but you know, what I, you know what I mean? Like, it's just a simple little misunderstanding because when a, when a turfy kind of person who has those kind of tendencies already sees a trans woman they feel like like it's literally the case of their gender identity is being attacked that's how they experience it because we have all these traits that they perceive as masculine um yet we still are women so they feel like oh no like it creates an instability in the cis woman identity and they lash out at us as if it's our fault for existing when really it's just their own insecurities that have been implanted within them by the structure of femininity as it operates in our current cultural moment. So, Woman in our society means many things, from periods, menstruation, to childbirth, to I don't know what, and... Yeah, but you can't just rest. Here's my issue. And I'm actually going to philosophically argue with this instead of just canceling Slavoj Žižek. Like, I'm actually going to make my case here. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not one of those people who just makes grifty, stupid content that's all based on moralizing and fucking individual feelings. What I will say, though, is that what it means to be a woman cannot actually be reduced to biological... um phenomenon and experiences like having a period or and and so on and so on like simply because of the fact that that is literally what patriarchy historically has done to women is reduce them to biological functions reduce them to biological functions of childbirth and child raising um and I think a lot of feminists would probably agree with me that that is kind of an inaccurate thing to say about women overall in general and femininity in general is more than just your fucking vagina and more than just your fucking womb. You see what I'm saying? It's this It's this hysterical, and I'm probably using that uh, term incorrectly, theoretically. In fact, I know I am, but it's this... It's this it's not hysterical. It's this neurotic over-identification with one's cis female body um, that then bleeds over and crosses into the territory of basically attacking trans women. Yeah, these statements are a bit opposite to how he has presented himself in the past a lot. Yeah, it's an, it's an inconsistency in his broader philosophy to say this type of stuff. Like, it's just... It's just an inconsistency. It's a small wrinkle. And it makes me wonder, like, this might have something to do with his own sort of internal predilections as sort of an older cis man. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, people are just... Everybody's got their bullshit. You know what I'm saying? As somebody who dresses like, like a woman, sorry, it's not enough. I mean, mm -hmm. there is a problem here. And I think... And the other thing that I was going to say is you can't just rest on, you can't just say, oh, well, our society conflates sex and gender. Therefore, in our society, what a woman is, is menstruation and childbirth and all of that. You can't just rest on that because what you're actually doing when you do that is you're reifying, you're rebuilding that society when you say that. You're sinking into it, you're simping into it. And you're reproducing it at the end of the day, and that's not going to change anything. Like previously, he, he discussed how he wasn't sure about being trans because there wasn't a massive precedent of gender as a social construct. Yeah, but there is, because that's all it is. That's all it ever has been. So he viewed it as modern painting the past. I don't even know what that would mean. I haven't heard him say this. 
Yeah. I think if we bring this conflict into the open, yes, it's absolutely crucial. But just back to my line, I agree with you. I'll just repeat my old, old joke on Black Lives Matter. No? Mm. I... Uh, my, that's why I supplement it, as you probably know, I'm probably repeating myself with another wonderful phrase. You know the third part of this story, I've written about it. First you have Black Lives Matter, then you have White Lives Matter, then you have a wonderful Australian idea which then circulated around. You have Stalin with a poster where it says, No Lives Matter. <laughs> <laughs> that's for me the truth of it. I don't- yeah, 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 yeah. He, yeah, that's that's all from that clip, but uh, it's pretty bad. It's pretty fucking bad. And it's pretty disappointing. It's pretty disappointing how Slavoj would think this. And apparently people don't know this because you have all these people on Twitter, all these mutuals I have on Twitter, all these fellow trans people on Twitter who are always tweeting, oh, I love Slavoj, I am Slavoj, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, Dude, literally like a month, ago, like five, five or six weeks ago, he literally said that we're fake. Like <laughs> he literally said we're fake women. Like what do you? Why are you? <laughs> why are you defending this? Like I don't. Yeah, it's just really disappointing. And here I will really illustrate to you why I'm fucking disappointed, because I find th- what he says here to be. Why? so fucking um generative and illuminative and illustrative of like like he really connects with what it actually means to be like a trans person in this clip like so i just don't understand why he didn't develop these ideas further but Let's listen to this, and then I'll explain more my thinking LGBT on it. LGBT plus, or transgender. Precisely what fascinates me so much is a certain immanent antagonism. The official, let's call it, ideology of LGBT plus is something that I, without any irony, benevolently, would have called Judith Butler historicism. Gender identities are not biologically determined, it's socially, historically constructed through performative, discursive gains, and so on and so on. Okay, but what fascinates me so much is that, and I know many of them, uh, all those guys who actually make transgender operations, they speak a language which is exactly the opposite one, which is an brutally, openly, I use this term prohibited by today's discourse theory historicist, essentialist language. Repeatedly, persons who, for example, underwent this painful operation from man to woman, I noticed how almost always they use this term, I'm so grateful that now finally I live in a body into which I should have been born. The language they speak is one of pure essentialism. In the- yeah, yeah. So, yeah, he's basically saying, like, people who say that, the born in the wrong body type of idea, is it is an essentialist idea. Because basically what you're saying is that you had a female soul before you were born, but you were, like, there was some kind of mix-up. But that's obviously really not how it works unless you're, like, an idealist. You know what I mean? Um, but the complicated thing about... Uh, the, cause I obviously don't, I'm not like a Judith Butler person. Like I, I honestly, I read a passage out of gender trouble and I hated every, every minute of it was basically bad. Like, like she leaves the door open for naturalist, essentialist people to come in and fucking like, it's just not good enough. It's just the theory of gender as performance is not good enough. It just, it just isn't good enough for me. Like it, it, you know what I'm saying? This 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 cringe historicism is not good. But here's the thing. It's not just that genders are socially constructed. It's literally that the social machines that run that society is made of basically um 
cross over into the biological domain. That is why there's a conflation. Like, because people now, administrative establishment people will say, oh, look at all the data. All the, all the big institutions agree with us now. They've updated it to say that sex and gender are different. But it's like, that isn't even enough. That isn't even enough. Because the thing that would make them the same in the first place, which then you would have to separate them, is the fact that the social crosses into the fucking physical and biological by nature of how societies maintain themselves. That's that's literally how societies maintain themselves. Deleuze the and Guattari explain this in Anti-Oedipus. They say cruelty is the movement of culture that inscribes itself upon the body. That is the meaning of, that's what cruelty actually means. It forcibly injects production into desire and desire into the social field. That's, that is what cruelty is. It's, literally how societies maintain themselves it's markings on the body inscriptions definitions given to physical biological bodies by social machines because social machines use human beings as their cogs basically so you understand what i'm saying does that make any sense or is am i like having a schizo moment do you get my point One's in the chat if you get my point. Um, so basically, our move, what I think we have to do now is basically make the reverse operation and say, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, try to build and siphon out of whatever possible cultural material I can, my own social machine to combat the dominant one that has inscribed me to be this and I'm going to re-inscribe myself. Redefine. Literally, we have to take back our bodies and say, no, I'm not born in the wrong body. I have a woman's body, even though you would say the contrary. You see what I'm saying? That is, to me, that ultimately is the radicalism of trans transness that I that I appreciate the sense of it is as if there is a basic sexual orientation inscribed into my whatever we call it soul but there was just an in my birth an ontological mistake as it were I was born in a wrong sex yeah he literally uses the word inscribed like that's the beauty of us we literally even if we express it in an essentialist, inaccurate way, we literally fight back against the social machine with our own inscription. We literally take back our bodies. That's... And I feel like if I made this case to Slavoj, he would agree with me. I don't know. Now, I don't think this is simply ideology. That's crucial. I think that precisely the reference to psychoanalysis, German idealism and so on, allows us to explain in a materialist way how something which is contingent can nonetheless be experienced as your predestination as a necessity. See what, okay, so I'm going to review what he just said there. Things that are contingent, you can experience them as essential. As we learned from Freud or from great German idealists, your truly free decisions are not conscious decisions. Your conscious decisions are rather superficial. You are, am I no, doing no, something no, no, wrong? No, no, no. No. no, I thought you were, no, like, no. I thought I felt like Khrushchev on Crimea when <laughs> Brezhnev was making a pen to the post. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Let me go quickly on it. What I want to say is that just a, uh, if this sounds to you something abstract and so on, allow me to use my eternal old examples. Isn't it that the highest free acts are precisely always experienced as necessity? For example, let's say your country is occupied. You I like this so much because it connects back to Sartre as well, who I used to be really into as well, where like true freedom means realizing the fact that everything is basically contingent therefore you can just 
choose in a good faith way what you actually want to do instead of living in bad faith following a social exigency like the role of masculinity, for example. You have to join resistance. You do it because you feel that you would betray yourself. No and what Slavoj adds to this analysis is basically that when you make that kind of decision or like, like, when you, when you experience that, you experience that as something that you have to do, like you need to. Like it's just, it's something that is on, it's, it's felt as if it's something outside of you compelling you to do it. Like you have to do it, you know what I mean? And that's why I connect it basically to mean that it's an unconscious choice, which is, I think, what he's about to explain. Not doing it. It's not a choice in the sense of strawberry cake or, or, or vanilla cake or whatever. It's I do it because I cannot do it otherwise. Or a more pathetic example, think about love. You fall in love. You never fall in love. In the sense of I'm looking around, nice lady or nice man here, there, let me make a choice. No, all of a sudden you realize that you are in love. The decision is never made in the present time. And what I'm saying is that this LGBT essentialism makes this clear. If you want to, in a trans operation or just in a more superficial way by cross-dressing and so on, if you want to change your sexual identity, it is, we can account for it nicely, how it is still a contingent free decision of yours but it has to appear to you as a necessity. Why? Because it's a radical decision. Or usual decisions, like do I choose, I don't know, this type of water or coke or whatever. There, you are already constituted as a subject and you just make choices. But radical decision is where, in a pathetic sense, you choose yourself. Yeah, you, in a moment, you seize the means of subjectivation. In a slight way, you kind of create yourself. Happening in the unconscious, obviously. So it's not like... I hope this makes sense to you people. It's not like you're literally picking. It's like... You're creating yourself. You know what I mean? You get what I'm saying? And again, that's all I'm trying to, to do. What I... Don't buy in the usual LGBT plus ideology is this happy free floating identities, you know, like I can be multiple identities, today I'm gay, tomorrow I'm heterosexual, then I jump here and there and so on and so on. No, they underestimate terribly the pain, the traumatic decision of assuming a certain sexual identity and the greatness of transgender is for me precisely that it brings us very, very close to this radical level of freedom yeah which is that's such a based comment of him to say that like uh, <laughs> i can't imagine how why he would say oh it's there's something fake in it like what do you mean it's, there's something fake in it what what are you talking about dude Wait, what do you mean it's a connection that your brain makes deterministically? That's kind of... I would say that's an inaccurate way of phrasing it. Because it, it's not really your brain, although it is. And it's not really... It's not really determined by, like... It's all contingent anyway. That's kind of the point. Uh... But yeah, that's that was the good video. That was the bad video. That this is my video about Slavoj's trans takes. Um, like everything that is you leading up to that point from every other experience in your life. Produce, yeah, yeah. Everything is everything is everything is like that. Uh, hopefully, I don't get shit for making this video by some. By some beanie wearing cis cis dudes who think that they're above discussing transphobia. <laughs>
Ah, the world we live in.